Here's another record that the miracle of Shuffle brought me back to. Reading and exploring the world of punk many years back, Crass stood out to me as one of the most interesting bands. Pioneers of the anarcho-punk sound, Crass were artists who met their words with actual activism and action, true anarchists who expressed their anti-establishment and authoritarian views through their DIY music. Feminists, animal rights activists and anti-war, they stood for a lot of things I agree with while pointing out the hypocritical nature of punk ideology in the mainstream, calling out the clash directly on one particular song. The band's story is fascinating, their influence on political culture and activism during their short tenure is unique and quite unheard of in the world of music today, or at any time really. Punk can be unapologetically raw and crass, pun intended, but not quite like crass are, with spoken word and dissonant guitar distortions, scratchy and dingy in tone. The band border on art punk with a continual exploration of feedback noise through their songs where you might expect it simple power chord riffs. When they do resemble more traditional styles, they are buried, distant, quiet and second fiddle to the chemistry between the bass guitar and the drums. The core melody comes from the bouncy bass guitar lining the direction of each track with a chromatic charm. The drums sound narrow but rattle away with a militant industrial vibe, keeping rhythm with snare rolls and marching rhythms between kick and snare. The cymbals are quiet and often hit at the same time as the drum, rarely heard in the moments between. They create quite the gloomy, nihilistic atmosphere, taking on the weight of urgency they feel for their world views. Vocalist Steve Ignorant, as the lead voice, has quite the stark and blunt approach to his performance, almost spoken word or shouted word as his thick London accent dominates the listener's attention. It's again unapologetic and straight to the point, a brilliant union of art and intention. You can feel the passion and fire for their beliefs. The album is also littered with creativity in the form of sampling, artsy spoken word interludes from Eve Libertine and interesting song ideas. The anti-nuclear They've Got a Bomb sets a grin tone with crackling guitar noise and as Steve says, 20 odd years now waiting for a flash. It goes silent as if the bomb has gone off. Fantastic. After its opening track, the music starts and ends with two renditions of Do They Owe Us a Living solidifying one of its main themes. At 32 minutes, it's fast, direct and loaded with short tracks, 18 in total, but they play like a singular experience in moments, often rolling from one into the next, sometimes with the shifts in tempo being transitioned through the drums which steadily increase or decrease in speed. The record's DIY production doesn't hold it back, it's a low fidelity affair and the reality and genuine nature of its construction makes complete sense given the circumstances. It's part of its charm. I love this record for its character, conviction and substance. The music is grounded in reality. The people, ideas are real and meaningful. A much more intelligent form of punk with a strong, harsh, unforgiving aesthetic. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to see some more of my music blogs, go check the website out. Every page has over a thousand articles sorted by artist, year, genre and more. Just hit Control F and have a search for something that interests you. You can find a link to the blog in the description box down below, where you'll also find links to my other YouTube channels. Check them out if you are curious. Thanks again for watching and be sure to subscribe to catch the next upload.